Welcome back guys, today we're going to be finishing up our custom character model by having Freddy, our prop from last video, follow our player model as well as having proper animations and rotations. So I hope you guys enjoy. Verse into the verse explorer and I'm going to create a new verse file and I'm going to call this custom model device or something, just create that. So the first thing is our code needs to know what creative prop we want. To do this, we make an at editable and we're going to call it Freddy prop of type creative underscore prop equals creative underscore prop. Create a method that's going to make our Freddy prop follow our player. So to do that, I'm going to make a update model. It's going to take an agent of type agent and you need to add the suspense type void equals we type suspense because we want this to run in the background because we always want to be updating our model in the background. So the first thing is if fort character, so we need to get the Fortnite character associated with our agent and agent is just a player. So agent get fort character like that. And firstly, we need to go up here and include fortnite.com slash characters. Like that. That's going to get rid of this error we are going to make a loop so the loop we're going to sleep for 0.0, .0 to make sure our game does not crash and in here all we really need to do is just call freddy prop dot move to we are going to pass in the fort character dot get transform dot translation what this is going to do is it's going to give us the position the position of our fortnite character next what we need is the our freddy to face the same direction as our fortnite character so what you want to do is do fort character dot get view rotation like that and then you're going to pass in a time which is the time you want your sort of freddy to move i'm going to pass in 0 0.15 and we're going to see if that you know works one other thing before this uh before the loop what we want to do is make sure our fourth character is hidden so just call for character dot hide now we need a way to call this method you could use a button or a trigger or whatever to make the start falling i'm go back into efn so we're gonna use the mutator zone because you know why not so i'm just gonna make that bigger and just call this change to freddy like that go back into your code create an add to editable mutator type mutator underscore zone device so what we need is firstly we call the whenever our player enters the mutator zone. So what that would look like is doing mutator dot agent enters event dot subscribe. And I'm going to make a new function called handle agent trigger or whatever. Obviously we don't have this function, so let's create a new function here called handle agent trigger. It's gonna take an agent of type agent type void and so because this has the suspend, we first need to call spawn like this and then press enter and then just call the update model. Now, whenever anyone enters the mutator zone, it's going to pass in that agent as an argument, which we receive here. So then we can just pass in this agent like this. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Just so go back into your UEFN and first build versus code. So build that, go into your, your content folder here in your creative devices. And then fine, this is my custom model device. So you can see here, we need a Freddy prop. It's going to be this one. And then we need a mutator zone, which is this one like that. And then we can just save all verse build verse code. And let's launch session, see if that works. Okay, so I cannot see the mutator zone. Enter. Hey, there we go. So we have Freddy moving around, you can see. So obviously we need to make some fixes here. So we're going to be tackling three different things. So first, you, you can probably see that Freddy was kind of floating up a bit. So an easy way to just fix that is click on Freddy, press Control E. And then what you can do is just in here, just drag him down a little bit. That It's a bit of a hacky approach and it might take some trial and error to find the correct way. But it's easy enough with no code. So just compile, save. What you can also do is bring him a little bit in front like this to sort of make him always in front of the camera. That way we can actually see him. So 
put them there, compile and save. Okay, next up, we need the animations. For here, I'm gonna create a new cinematic level sequence. I'm just gonna call this Freddy Animation Running. Go in here. What you need to do here is uh, click on Freddy. So make sure he's highlighted. Click on track, add an actor. He should pop up here. If not, you can search him up here, but because we have him selected, we can just click him here. And then just here, just create a new animation. And in my case, it was the rig, the run like this. You can see here, he's now gonna be running. Now this bar is how, how long the sequence. Currently it's going to play our sequence, but at around the two point something second mark, it's going to not play the sequence. And so just grab this, the end of the sequence and just grab it here. By the way, I have this in seconds. Uh, by default, it's in frames. So you can go here and then click show time as seconds like that. That's going to make it show seconds, which I think it's a lot easier to work with. Like that, we have our Freddy. So that's basically all there is. With our sequence done, go back into your Fortnite devices grab your cinematic sequence like this and then just click on your sequence the one that you set up mine was Freddy animation running click loop playback and that's pretty much it all right now let's head back into the code here all right so in here firstly we need access to our cinematic so make it not editable we're gonna call this running cinematic of type cinematic sequence device equals cinematic sequence device okay, so ideally we want our cinematic to play anytime our player moves so an easy way to do that is just check when the player starts moving and we can do that with the player sprint event i believe it's called okay so i'm going to be using this sprinted event which basically checks anytime our player starts sprinting okay so firstly in this loop firstly i'm going to type branch now i haven't gone over this these concurrency sort of keywords but but basically branch is sort of like spawn it just starts this in the background and that's just going to run and that just means that that anything after branch is going to be executed so for example we can print high or whatever so it's not going to wait until this finishes which it's never going to finish because it's an infinite for loop here and then immediately after starting this it's going to print high. So that's just what branch does. Okay, so once that's done, what we need after is listen to the sprinted event, which is anytime our player starts or stops moving. So let's make another loop here. I'm going to sleep for 0, 0.0 seconds. And basically here, I'm going to do the fourth character dot sprinted event dot await. Now I have not used the await keyword in any of the tutorials yet, Basically what await does is it just waits for this uh, event to actually happen. For example, if I type print high, it's going to suspend the thread here. So it's going to wait until the sprint event happens and then it's going to print high. If this never happens, then high is never going to be printed. So that's what the await keyword does. Now, if you look at sprinted event, this returns a tuple. Firstly, it returns the fourth character and then the logic. This logic is going to, if we look here, it says true if the character is sprinting. So this logic variable is going to be true if our character is sprinting or started sprinting and false, well, if they stopped sprinting. So that's you. So what we can do here is in our fourth character dot sprinted event, we can do is sprinting. So assign a variable to this. And I'm gonna call this tuple because it's a tuple. Okay, so now in here we can do if is sprinting tuple and remember our variable that told us whether a the character was true truly or falsely sprinting was the second one here so just like arrays they are zero indexed which means the zero corresponds to the first one which is the fourth character we don't want that we want the other value which is the logic value here so we pass in one and then we pass in question mark like that like that so if is sprinting then what we want to do is we want to do running cinematic dot play like that otherwise we want to do running cinematic dot stop we have that and that's pretty much it for cinematic sequences so let me go back here firstly build versus code and in here our cinematic sequence is going to be this one so let's click on this and then i'm going to push changes and let's see if that works there we go but if we start you can see here i started running so freddy is running along with me i can turn around but again, another issue is I can just do this and Freddy just sort of plummets like that. So 
and you can see if I stop moving the sequence starts stops moving and then I can just do this here I am literally building as Freddy Fazbear how is that you can see here but of course there's still the issue of Freddy sort of looking down whenever we actually look down which we should probably avoid so let's fix that up I'm going to again copy some code from last video I believe which so as always I'm going to leave this code in the description well not as always sometimes I forget but firstly let me actually get rid of this the move to function we're going to come back here in a bit but our player position is going to be this uh, fourth character that's going to be my player position and then I can just pass this like this player position like this now I'm going to get rid of this I'm going to call this Freddy position is going to be equal to my Freddy prop dot get transform dot get translation so far so good now the distance from the player that's just the distance between my player position and my Freddy position so passing Freddy and because this is part of the spatial math module you want to go up here and include temporary slash spatial math uh, with the capital M and then the direction is going to be my player position minus my Freddy position which we've just acquired here and then this is going to give me the angle like this so this piece of code right here and then we make a new rotation like this we pass in the angle and finally we can just pass in the new rotation here new rotation like that so that's going to make sure that Freddy doesn't move up and down whenever we rotate so and I'm sorry this from the player position to the new rotation should be inside of this for loop because well we want to be updating that every time our player moves or our Freddy moves so just grab this press tab and just align that inside of the for loop and then just go back into UEFN build verse code and push verse changes so if I start moving oh yeah you can see if I look up he's not gonna be looking up anymore so we can turn around and that's crank some 90s as Freddy Fazbear. As always, I hope this was helpful. And yeah.